This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. I am too. WrestleMania 17 is the talk of everybody right now. People still think it's the biggest WrestleMania ever. And we just had the 20 year anniversary. It went down on April 1st, 2001. Does it feel like 20 years ago, Kurt? It doesn't to me. Oh, time flew by very quickly. I'm surprised it's been 20 years, but it has been. <laughs> the Astrodome in Houston, Texas was packed that day. 67,920 fans. Uh, we had about a three and a half million dollar gross at the gate. It does a buy rate for 2.08. So that's an estimated $13.3 million, uh, roughly 900,000 buys, an all time record for a wrestling pay per view. When you think back to WrestleMania 17, do you remember it being one of the biggest shows you were ever a part of? Oh, without a doubt, especially at that point in my career, it was definitely the biggest show I've ever been a part of. And it had a lot to do with the main event being Rock versus Austin. Two of the biggest names in the business were going to go at it at that time. And I think that, uh, you know, basically uh, made it even extra special. It's uh, pretty remarkable to think about this gate here. $3,530,905, the largest for a pro wrestling event anywhere outside of Japan. It more than doubled the previous record of WrestleMania five. Did you know going in, this was going to be the all-time record, or is that not something that the guys even really talk about back then? We didn't talk about it much back then, but I, I'm actually not surprised. It was the biggest gate. Um, you know, it was, a, it was a, a stack card. It was a really awesome lineup. So it doesn't surprise me. Yeah. It, when you look at this roster, I mean, it's unbelievable. And of course, JR had a lot to do with that. He reminds us that, uh, he signed a lot of this hall of fame roster. He did. He did. It's uh, <laughs> the, uh, the event itself, the Astrodome, you know, we've, we've seen footage behind the scenes as fans where guys get to the building early. I think usually call time is 12 or one o'clock or something like that. And then you get to walk down the ramp. You get to walk out to the ring. People are still putting the final touches on the presentation before they open the doors for fans. But what's your reaction walking out there and looking around and seeing holy cow, this isn't like a, an arena. This is a dome and it's going to be packed. And this is something else. It was the first stadium I ever performed in my whole entire life. So I was overwhelmed. You know, I kept imagining when my music played, you know, 70,000 fans would stay on their feet and scream. And, and that happened. I was really surprised. It was so overwhelming. It sent chills down my spine. Really exciting. Is this something that you would invite a bunch of family to? I mean, it feels like a, a major moment in your life to be on a card like this in an, in an event this big with this many fans. Are you inviting, you know, cousins and aunts and uncles and all that to a show like this? You know what? Ironically, my family didn't go to any events. My extended family. I, I never had them there unless it was in Pittsburgh. But th that would have been the type of WrestleMania I should have invited them to. I asked them to come, but they didn't want to travel. And, uh, so I, I understood that and respected that. Let's talk about access fan access was a huge success from the WWF standpoint here. The place was absolutely mobbed. Uh, there were some negative reviews saying there were actually too many people there and that the autograph lines could be ours. And, um, they're, they're monetizing the experience in a new way. I think fans could spend $300 and eat ravioli with big show or pay $200 and get a sock from Mick Foley. What'd you think of the fan access event? Is this your first time doing something like that? Uh, yes. And, uh, it was overwhelming. It was definitely overcrowded, very uncomfortable, but you have to do it for the fans. It's fan access. WrestleMania is once a year. You have to show the fans your appreciation for them. So, you know, it's crazy because the company was trying to make money any way they could, you know, eating ravioli with big show and, you know, Mick Foley getting Mick Foley sock. It was just like, they were just stealing money from the fans left, left and right. It was just crazy. Uh, you know, it's uh, incredible how they come up with ideas and how to make money. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's talk. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30 year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money, it's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at savewithconrad.com.